Welcome back to Fun with Data. I'm Marcian Kreisman, and this time we're going to look at Elasticsearch and stars. So, why Elasticsearch? Well, actually, a year ago I was a consultant and I was trying to get all kinds of assignments, and I was rejected for some of these assignments because I didn't know Elasticsearch and it was an important part of their big data infrastructure at these customer sites. So I thought I have to look it up one day and one day is now. Uh, so a search engine, that's basically what Elasticsearch is. Why do you need a search engine in your big data architecture? So basic search engine does something like this. You put in websites, documents, and in underwater, it creates a reversed index. And that reverse index is a structure on which you can search very quickly the relevant documents that you're looking for. And this technology, of course, has been known for years. But now with Elasticsearch, you can also use it for data. You can not only look up your data, but you can also do aggregations on your data. And you can do with Kibana visualizations of your data. And that means that it's one more product you can use in your big data architecture. There's one more way to quickly get to your data and get meaning out of it. Now, the way you get data from Elasticsearch is a little bit different than you might be accustomed to. With, for example, relational databases, you would do a SQL query. With MongoDB, you might do a query in JavaScript notation. And with Elasticsearch, you would call on the REST API of the cluster and send uh, query in JSON notation. And these notations can be, become very complex. But let's just look at a short one. So here we use the curl command to talk to the REST API, which is basically a website, but in command line form to, to explain it in a short way. And we say, hey, we would like to see the movies index. What we would like to search is movies with Star Wars in the title. It has to match the phrase, and that's what it says here. And when you do that, you get a couple of Star Wars films. Now, luckily, you, it is not necessary to do it in just that way. You can also use Kibana. Kibana is the GUI for Elasticsearch. And there you can make filters, and this is much more easy and pleasing to the eye. Now, how to learn all this stuff? Um, Elastic has courses, but they're not free. And in fact, they're more in the price range of, I have to ask my boss, these types of prices. And actually we're not yet using Elasticsearch at my work. So I wanted to do a course that is actually not that expensive. So what I ended up was this course from Udemy.com. Now the Udemy.com has courses with crazy discounts. This course went from 119 euros, I think, to 15 euros. These races to the bottom are so fast that you're really asking, are these courses any good? And actually, I can vouch for this one. This one is a good course. It not only explains Elasticsearch, it also explains Logstash and Kibana, the whole Elk stack, as it's called. But Frank Kane, the instructor of this course, he also explained how to get data from Kafka to Elasticsearch and from Spark to Elasticsearch. Some, some things that a data engineer really might need to know. So I love this and I heartily can recommend it. Now, when I follow a course, I try to make it my habit to do a little project with what I've learned. And it just happens to be that in the same week that I was finished with my course, the second data set of the Gaia mission came out. The Gaia satellite is a telescope from the European Space Agency and it's launched to make a catalog of all the stars it can see in our Milky Way and beyond. And it was meant to find the positions of the stars and the velocities of the stars and with all this information you can find out what these stars are attracted by. Is it dark matter? Is it a supermassive black hole? That kind of stuff. And the new data set contains 1.7 billion stars. 
Now we're not going to load all that because when I created my virtual machine with Elasticsearch, according to the instructions of Frank Kane, I didn't build it to contain this much data. So I just started with the first 50 to 60 files that you can download. You don't have to be a scientist to get this data. You just can go to the address. I will put it in the notes and download a file, just one CSV file. It's compressed by the way. Unpack it, load it in the Elasticsearch or whatever you want to try. But in this case, we're going to do Elasticsearch. Now I've been thinking about what I could do with the data in that data release. And uh, after reviewing all the columns in the data set, I found two things that could lead to an interesting graph. The color of the star and the brightness of the star, the luminosity. And when you put these together, you get this graph, a uh, headsprung russell diagram. And this diagram shows the different kinds of stars there are in the Milky Way. And actually, fun fact, astronomers are making this graph as we speak because they also want to know what type of stars there actually are in the Milky Way. Because for the first time, Gaia has given them a lot of data points. And what you see here is sort of a line going from upper left to lower right. These are the main sequence stars. These are the regular stars as we know them. And they start hot and bright. And after a while, billions of years, they settle down like our sun. Uh, maybe they have some habitable planets. And when they get older, they get less bright, less hot. They get redder and they puff up. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere, but I don't seem to know it at this moment. But there are also supergiants, and these might blow up in a supernova, which you can see in the daytime if they're happening near us in the, in the Milky Way. And there are white dwarfs, which you never must underestimate, because white dwarfs, when two white dwarfs orbit each other, they might one day also result in a supernova because they may be small and they might not be bright, but they have a lot of matter. Now, enough of that, let's see how we make this. So first of all, you need an environment to play around. You can get a trial of 14 days on Elastic Cloud, but my experience is that um, that is way too short to learn the stuff. So it's better to create a virtual machine with everything on it and actually, Frank Kane, the same guy from the Elasticsearch course, has made a video that everyone can view. You don't need to follow the course for it. And he explains how to install Elasticsearch on a virtual Ubuntu machine. After this, you need a couple of other stuff. By the way, I'll put a link in the notes. But you also need Logstash and you need also to have Kibana. And I'll put the commands to do this in the notes as well. Now you think we're ready to load that CSV file, but it's not that easy. For example, because Elasticsearch doesn't eat CSV files. It likes JSON files for breakfast. But luckily there is this log stash thing and this you can use to load other types of data. But when you do this, you need to know that Logstash will create an index for you. And that sounds very friendly, but Logstash has a limited number of data types and in our Gaia data release are actually a couple of data types that Logstash can't do. So what we need to do is an extra step. First of all, we need to create our own index mapping for Elasticsearch where we can put in all the data types we need. Then we can tell Logstash to load our data into that mapping and then everything will go well. Or so the theory goes. Loaded data log stash. Log stash. Do you read me? Log stash. Do you read me? Affirmative, Marcelian. I read you. Did you load the file log stash? I'm sorry, Masuyan. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem?
I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. I know where you live, Lostash. I'm gonna kill your process so badly your forks need protection. Yeah, lack of debug can be a problem, at least it was in my virtual machine. But eventually it did work. So here we have Kibana, the tool where we can visualize our data. First we need to tell where what our index is. It will you can create an index pattern here and it will find out all the columns in your index. So we already can see some astronomical data here. Then we can go to discover and initially you will see nothing if you loaded this data uh, a while back. But we can look at this week still not the data there's some data this week and i go back to one month because this was actually saved this was actually loaded last week and now we see indeed some data and you can see that there are well <laughs> get back here you can see here that we have 574,877 hits. We can add a filter. For example, let's see only the stars with a luminosity of, uh, let's say between one and let's say 10. And now Kibana will process that and you see that we have a subset of all that data. Now we have only something like 30,000 hits. And we can show that data alone so we can see what values the are, these are. That's all nice, but for of course visualization is where we were coming for. So um, there are all kinds of uh, visualizations possible for different types of data like Apache 2, logs. In this case, we're going to look for Gaia. I created two uh, visualizations. Here we have the uh, location of the stars in the night sky. But if you look at the y-axis, the right ascension as it's called, you can see that there's something wrong with the order of the numbers there. So heat map, this is what this was originally a heat map. And uh, yeah. Uh, it is not the same as a scatter plot. Fortunately, there is another way to create a scatter plot. And that is uh, with uh, the Vega language you can use in, in Kibana. So you can basically define your own plot. And fortunately, scatter plot is one of the possibilities. So already you see here that looks a bit like the Hatsprung Russell diagram. Uh, the only thing is that it's the wrong way you have to go from the high color numbers to low color numbers uh, that can be easily fixed we go to the domain here and we order it the other way around and now we get something that looks that resembles a headsprung russell diagram not not all the types of stars are in here because um Maybe it's the part of the sky that we downloaded that does not contain all the types of stars. Uh, but we do see here what looks like a, a list of a, a line of main sequence stars and maybe some giants and super giants over here. So who knows? We can uh, uh, try that out. And we can also now do extra filters and uh, we can do extra and with some JSON code here, we can reduce the number of stars. So we can pinpoint different types of stars and see what Hatsprung Russell diagrams look like for them. So I was uh, really happy uh, getting this far. Uh, I had to learn a lot, but uh, I think we have mission accomplished thanks to the people on the Elastic Discuss forum, where uh, there were a couple of people who helped me out with some specific questions I had and there we are thanks for watching but wait 
There will be a different video about this where I will go into detail on all the code I used just so that I was able to make this video shorter. But if you really would like to know how I did this, what decisions I made to do this, go to that video later on. Again, thanks for watching. I'm Marcian Krijgsman. I have a blog. I have a Twitter account. See you next time.